Okay, so the whale is back with a huge drop. This time, they released not only one, but two different models. And it's not only state-of-the-art for open weight models, but is also beating GPT-5 and Gemini Pro on a number of key benchmarks. But that's not the most impressive part. It's scoring gold medal on a number of key computations. And these new models are extremely token efficient. Now we know that DeepSeek is compute constrained, and that's why they have really focused on optimization of the software stack. And it seems like it has really paid off. So in this video, I want to look at some of the key innovations that they made with these new models and why this probably is a bigger deal than you think. Now we're going to start off with the benchmarks because that's what everybody is talking about. So there are two different versions. One is DeepSeek 3.2 and then 3.2 Special, which needs its own special attention. Now it surpasses Gemini Pro and GPT-5 High on a number of key benchmarks, but I think this is not the main attention of this release. You could argue that they are benchmarking like everybody else, but there are some really interesting innovations that they have made. And you can divide this into three different pillars. One is a better attention mechanism, then scaling reinforcement learning, and then training generalized agents. So with this release, they are introducing something called DeepSeek Sparse Attention or DSA, which dynamically selects which token to attend to. Now this is great for boosting the efficiency in long context and maintaining the quality of the dense models. Attention is the main pillar of transformers, which is enabling large language models. But the vanilla attention mechanism scales quadratically with the number of tokens it's processing, which is going to be very compute intensive. With their new DeepSeek sparse attention mechanism, they have introduced the concept of indexer. With this, they use a small neural network to figure out how relevant each past token is to the current token. Now with this mechanism, they run the normal attention, but only over a subset instead of a full sequence. So even though the model itself is exactly same like version 3.1, both the pre-filling and decoding cost per token is substantially lower. So they use a substantially large training set for pre-training and they're doing pre-training still in FP8. Now it's still an MOE, but they are training domain experts separately, which is another key innovation. More on that later in the video. Now the second part of their strategy is to mainly focus on RL or reinforcement learning during post training. So for most of the open weight models, more of the compute goes into pre-training, but they're allocating more than 10% of the total compute to RL during post-training. So they're really shifting towards system two, which is very similar to reasoning models from OpenAI, like O1 and O3. They also made some key innovations using the GRPO optimization algorithm that they previously proposed. But for this, they had to create a synthetic data engine where the agent was trained on more than 1,800 environments and over 85,000 complex prompts. And that RL component has really helped them. Now, for the special version, they have actually pushed this even further. So they're using more than 20% of the compute just for the RL component. And in that case, their focus has been math, code, and logic not general knowledge. And hence, they were able to achieve gold medal status on a number of key competitions. Now, the next component is distillation from experts. So instead of creating a general model from the get-go, with a simple MOE strategy, they decided to use divide and conquer. And their idea is that it's easier to master one specific domain than to master the entire world simultaneously. So they train separate teacher models for different domain. For each one of them, they generated training traces. So the idea is that you can take these domain specialists and then perform large scale reinforcement learning to generate domain specific data. And then you can use this high quality domain specific data to distill a larger general knowledge model. They applied the same recipe for both vanilla 3.2 and 
DeepSeek V3.2 special, but this one has some extra ingredients in it. So the focus for 3.2 was efficiency. And that actually shows up in the compute. For the special version, the focus is on peak reasoning. Now, in this case, they started with curated chain of thought data to thought it how to think before RL began. Then they did aggressive GRP optimization, which forced self-correction by generating 64 plus attempts per problem. Now, this model is specifically trained for code, math, and logic, and it actually shows up in the results. So this model was able to achieve three different gold medals on very hard challenges and competitions, including the International Math Olympiad. And this is the first open model to achieve that. Now, according to them, the special has effectively achieved GPT-5 level reasoning in math and code before GPT-5 was publicly released. So it's definitely a step forward when it comes to open weight models. Now, there are definitely some things that we need to keep in mind while comparing this with something like GPT-5 or Gemini Pro. And the first most important thing is that even though the model performs on par with these two giants on a number of key benchmarks, it's not token efficient. In fact, this is the model that generates the most tokens out of uh, all the models that they have compared especially when it comes to this high reasoning special model, it generates substantially more tokens. However, the cost per token is substantially lower compared to the competition. Now in here, they say that we believe that token efficiency remains a critical area for future investigation. And that could be pointing towards the V4 and R2 release. There are other limitations as well. So in here, they say we acknowledge certain limitations when compared to frontier closed source models such as Gemini 3 Pro. First, due to the fewer total training flops, the breadth of world knowledge in DeepSeq V2 still lags behind the leading proprietary models. Now we plan to address this knowledge gap in future iteration by scaling up the pre-training compute. Second, token efficiency remains a challenge. DeepSeq V typically requires longer generation trajectories or more tokens to match the output quality of models like Gemini 3 Pro. And then they say, third, solving complex tasks is still inferior to Frontier Labs, motivating us to further refine our foundation models and post-training recipes. Which is pretty great because they're not making claims out of thin air, but at the same point, they are very realistic of what to expect out of these new Frontier open weight model. Now, apart from uh, these innovations, they have also introduced thinking in tool usage or interleaved tool usage during thinking traces. This is something that was initially introduced by Claude. Re more recently, Minimax was the first open weight model who started using these along with the Kimi K2. But now DeepSeek is using the same thing. So the idea is that the model will be able to use tools during its thinking process. However, the way they have done it is a little different than the other providers are doing. Now, in this case, they are discarding historical thinking traces when a new user message is introduced. So during turn uh, one, if it uses a tool and it has thinking traces, then during the second run, it discards those previous or prior thinking traces. And that's why they say that different coding agents may not be able to effectively use this mechanism. And they recommend to use the non-thinking models for optimal performance in such architectures. So if you're trying DeepSeek V3.2 or the 3.2 special in any coding agent, make sure that they are effectively using this new tool usage capability. Now, a couple of comments at the end of the video on the competition between open weight and close weight models. I think both open weight and close weight models are pretty much comparable at this point, but the main divide is the ecosystem around these models. For something like DeepSeek or even Kimi K2, the ecosystem is not present. But when it comes to something like Gemini or ChatGPT or even Claude for that matter, these companies have been able to develop a very strong ecosystem. And hence, we're going to see a much stronger adoption of these systems. 
But nevertheless, releases like this will drive innovation and will push open weight models forward. Also, there seems to be some indication that with this new training and inference paradigm, DeepSeek probably is going to be able to serve these models with the Huawei Ascend AI chips, which means more competition in the hardware space as well. Anyways, do let me know what you think about this release. But just one caution from my side, don't expect the same level of performance like GPT-5 or Gemini 3 Pro, especially if you're using the DeepSeek chat, because that version still uses the 3.2 version, not the special version. That's only available to the API. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.